Flow Control in Java directs the flow of execution in your programs. So basically when you write your methods, you would not uh, necessarily want all the statements in your method to be executed sequentially one after the other, right? So there might be a case where you would like to have certain set of statements to be executed based on some conditions, right? Or there might be a scenario where you would like certain set of statements to be executed repeatedly based on some conditions. So you are going to achieve that uh, using the flow control statements and in this section we are going to see how. Okay. So here we are going to see what are the different flow control statements we have in Java and how you use it. Okay. So uh, I've got a table with two columns. The first column is nothing but the syntax of the statement and the second column is the example where we are going to see how you actually code that in your programs. The first flow control statement I have is if else. So basically the, the if statement is going to check for a particular condition and if that condition is true it's going to execute certain set of statements else it's going to execute cert, certain other set of statements. Right? So if you see the syntax here I have if condition 1 is true executes certain set of statements else if condition 2 is true executes some other set of statements else if none of the above are true execute certain set of statements. Okay. So here I've got only one else if given here, but in reality you can have a number of else if statements in between the if and else, right? So what are the valid combinations I can have with this else uh, if else if conditions? So the there are only two roles to it. One is the if condition has to be the first statement in this block if else blocks, and if at all you have an else statement, it's got to be the last statement in the block. So if you can write any combination of uh, if else blocks which abide to these two rules, uh, you're going to have a syntax free code without any errors. Okay. So let's have a look at the example here. Uh, we have an integer a whose value is 10 and here we are doing a check if a is less than 10 print some statement else if a is greater than 10 print some other statement else print some statement okay so since value of a is neither greater than 10 nor greater than 10 it's equal to 10 so it's going to go into the else block and you're going to print whatever is there in this else block so it's going to print equal to 10 so that's going to be our result out okay all right now switch so basically in switch it's somewhat similar to the if statement right so you give a value in the switch statement okay and what you have in case is basically a list of potential results to the value right so say for example if uh, the value matches case a then these statements are going to be executed else if the value matches case b then this set of statements are, is going to be executed similarly you have a default which is very similar to else. So if none of the above are true, it's going to execute the default, right? So one thing to note here is uh, in switch, you can only have integers, only numbers. So you can't have strings in, st in these switch statements, okay? So taking an example, the same thing as earlier, int a is 10. So when I give a switch statement, case one, would mean that I'm actually checking for value in given in switch with one, right? So I'm having some print statements out there. Case 10, I'm checking if the value is equal to 10, printing some statements. Default, if none is to print this. So one thing to note here is uh, whenever you give certain set of statements in your case block, you should give a break here. If not, if your uh, value is going to match any of the cases it's actually going to execute all the statement until the end unless it finds a break right so at the end of each case statement each case block you need to give a break statement right so that's about switch so one more difference between in the if and switch is uh, Basically, in if uh, you can check for different kind of conditions, whereas whereas in case whereas in switch you can only check for 
equality condition you can only check if the value of a is equal to 1 or is equal to 10 so you can't check here if the value of a is greater than 10 something like that right okay next do while and while so now if you want to execute certain set of statements repeatedly okay you go for do while you can also go for while and you can also go for for loop which we will be talking in the next slide okay so what's the difference between do while and while they are basically almost the same so basically if you look at the syntax at do while statement you have the do block where you execute certain statements and then you write a while condition okay so until this condition is true the statements in the do block are going to be executed right so if you look at the example int i is equal to 0 do system dot 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 mental and in do right i plus plus while i is less than 10 so until this condition holds true it's going to execute the statement in the loop do loop do block so what it's going to print it's going to print in do 11 times because this statement is going to hold true for 11 times now coming to the while it's almost very similar right you don't have a do here you only have while so while the condition is to execute certain set of statements right so similarly the example is very similar here <coughs> so what's the difference between do while and while the difference is say the condition fails in the very first case for example now let's take uh, an example where i is 10 and not 0 okay what would happen say i is 10 not 0 okay initially so when you do a do while it's going to print in do first and it's going to check while i is less than 10 no it's false i is not less than 10 so it's going to come out of the loop so it's going to print this in do one time right but when you come to while it's first going to check the condition while i is less than 10 10 is less than 10 no false so it's simply going to come out of this loop so if there is no condition matched if there is not even a single match in a do while the statements execute at least once so you are sure that even though there is no match it is going to execute at least once but when you come to while the statement will not execute if there is no match so that is the difference between do while and while statements the for loop again is used for the same reasons you use a while loop to execute a certain set of statements repeatedly based on some conditions right so if you have a look at the syntax here for the for loop so the first statement basically has three things in it the first thing is initialize then provide a condition and then an expression so most of the times what you initialize is nothing but a counter so say for example i want to execute a certain set of statements a number of times right 10 number of times so i'll have to have a counter so that i can keep track of the number of times the statements are being executed so here in, in the initialize block i initialize nothing but the counter so if you see the example given here it says for int i is equal to 10 so here I am initializing the value of i to be 10 and i is nothing but a counter here right and in the condition I give i less than 10 so it means till i is less than 10 I want to execute these statements within this for block and how the value of i is going to be changed using the expression whatever I give, given the expression right so in the expression I give i plus plus so basically the, in the expression I can most of the times it's either going to be an increment or decrement operation right so let's see how it really works so when the control comes to this for loop for the first time it the control comes to this for loop it actually executes whatever is there in the initialization block so it executes int i is equal to 0 so this initialization is done only once right and then it's going to check for the condition i is less than 10 yes because i is 0 it's less than 10 now if the condition is matched it goes into the for loop and it executes whatever is there in this loop right whatever is there within this first statement so it executes this system.out.println infer then again it goes back here 
and I, what it does now is it executes whatever is there in the expression so in the expression what I have i plus plus so it's going to increment the value of i to 1 now right and then it's again going to check for the value of i for this condition so it's going to do this every time until this condition becomes false then it is going to execute come out of this loop and execute the next statements after the for loop right? so I have this pretty simple so basically most most of the time you can use either a while loop or the for loop but uh, the advantage I think you have with the for loop is uh, you can uh, put everything in one one line itself one statement itself whereas in while you've got to keep track of things at multiple places right so right that's it about the flow control